Take your Bible tonight, turn to Numbers chapter 11. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 11, we're doing part two tonight on the nothings of provision. And tonight we're going to be looking at the, <clears throat> the principle how provisions of God are scorned when God's supply is abundant. We're going to look at that tonight in Numbers 11 and verse number 6. So let's take a, a look at that verse, Numbers 11, verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Let's pray. Bless, Lord, the message tonight. Help me to speak clearly. Help me to make the message understandable and practical. Lord, work in our hearts. Help us to be attentive to what you're trying to get across to us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Well, God's people were being led through the wilderness by the Lord. He took care of the grocery bill for several million people for each day. You think that was a, a feat? Huh? No problemo for the Lord. He provided manna for them to eat. Manna was like the coriander seed. You can see pictures of it uh, on uh, the internet. Manna was white and its taste was like wafers that were made with honey. And this diet would help them to stay healthy in the hot desert wilderness. The fact that would, if, it, if it had honey in it, I don't know if it did, but if it did, honey is very good for you folks. It's uh, very medicinal and uh, of course it gives you energy. Uh, but this folks, this food is what God wanted them to have in that hot, hot environment. The manna was a supernatural gift from God. The manna was not a product of earth. It was not brought out of the country of Egypt. It was not made by man. It came down from heaven. Amen. In spite of what God had done for them, the people were not content. They were ungrateful for God's provision and took those provisions for granted. The Hebrews became irritated as well as indifferent at God's provision. They were blind to the blessings that were right under their noses. Oh my, have you ever been blind to the blessings under your noses? A lot of Christians are. They did not count their blessings because they failed to see the value of what God had given to them. They wanted, they wanted meat to eat, and they were tired of the manna from heaven that came from God. Beloved, ingratitude, unthankfulness, and selfishness will cause your heart to harden and crust over like a dried out lake bed because these attitudes focus on yourself. That'll get you into trouble. And when you focus on your yourself, you start leaving out the Lord in your life. You start uh, uh, leaving out what the needs of other people. Even though this multitude spurned the manna, God placed great value upon it. But the people didn't value what God provided for them. So why do people take provisions from the Lord for granted. Why do they do that? Why does a person scorn what God has so freely given to them? Well, here are several thoughts. Why do people scorn the Lord? Number one, an attitude that believes God owes you something. That'll get you in trouble. Don't take God's blessings for granted or go through life believing that God or other people owe you. That's part of the problem in our nation right now because there's a lot of people that believe that way. You are not 
owed at all. Don't swaddle the lie that says, everything I have, I got on my own. That is a lie. That is not true. Some folks are not grateful at all because they think they deserve every good thing they have and more. If you start going through life believing that everyone owes you something, then you're going to be miserable. And you're going to make people around you miserable with your expectations for them. In fact, you're going to act like a big baby because that is how babies behave. Amen. Beloved, never take for granted the favor of God upon your life. Don't spurn God's favor or become apathetic at what He has done for you. A lot of Christians do that. God's favor, for example, was upon Joseph when he was the keeper in the prison. God's favor was upon the Israelites when they departed from the country of Egypt. God's favor was upon Samuel as he grew up to be a fine man of God. God's favor was upon the Virgin Mary as she was chosen by the Lord to be the mother of Jesus Christ. What an honor for her. God's favor was upon Daniel when he was taken captive into Babylon. In fact, David said this. He said, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Psalm 119, 58. Don't throw away God's favor and His blessing upon your life by rebelling against Him and disobeying His word. Don't let that happen to your life. Don't let those attitudes creep into your life. Be thankful for all the blessings that God has given to you. Well, I don't think I have very many. Well, you need to learn how to count then. Uh, if you'll just count your blessings, you'll, you'll realize what God has done for you. And if you don't know how to do that, then get somebody who knows about God's blessings to point those blessings out to you and teach you what the blessings of God's are. You know, the nursing aides for an 89-year-old man planned a surprise party for this man. This active and alert retired doctor had his leg amputated two years earlier. It had been a struggle for him to adjust to living his life with only one leg, spending most of his time in a wheelchair. Family, friends, and volunteers filled the brightly decorated room. He looked at the group and he signaled a sweet six-year-old girl, the grandchild of one of his aides, to come over to him. He reached out and he put his arm around the little girl. He introduced her and announced, She is my mascot. She is my mascot. He went on to tell that group that had gathered that he would never forget the first time that she visited him. She came in, looked at him, and his folded up pant leg in the wheelchair. And in her charming, sweet little voice, she said, Where is your prosthesis? Where's your prosthesis? He was astounded that the six-year-old knew the word. She showed him her prosthesis and told that doctor her story. When she was three years old, a man broke into her home, killed her 17-month-old baby brother with a machete, and he cut off her leg. He said this young girl taught him 
not to complain and to be grateful for the 88 years during which he had two legs. Listen, are you grateful for what God has given to you and done for you? If you are, would you raise your hand and just say amen? Listen, we have a lot to be thankful for. Are you thankful for the way the Lord has provided for you so many times? Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Listen, I want to tell you something tonight. It doesn't make any difference how old you are. God's going to load you with benefits. Whether you're 5, 15, or 55, or 95, God's going to bless you each day. Now, there's something else we want to see here. Uh, there's another reason why people scorn God's blessings. It's ungratefulness for what you enjoy that will make you scornful. Being ungrateful for what you enjoy. When people are ungrateful and unthankful, they also tend to gripe a lot. Let me take a look at yourself. Do you gripe a lot? No, I don't gripe a lot. Listen, ask people around you if you gripe a lot, okay? Griping about what you deserve or what you don't have is an outward expression many times of an ungrateful heart. Don't go around grumbling because you don't get what you want. Be grateful that you don't get what you deserve. Face it all, we deserve, we all deserve the judgment of God in our life. We all deserve to go to hell when we die. We all deserve that. But Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins. And if you can't be thankful for what you receive, be thankful for what you escape. Thank God for the Lord who helps us and delivers us from the flames of hell. Elis Crum penned these words. He paid the debt he did not owe. I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. I love that song. You know, beloved, ingratitude will blind you to all the great blessings that God has given to you, and there are many. That's what happened to the Jews concerning the manna. Ingratitude will blind you to the blessings of godly parents, a great church, wonderful friends, and God's provisions for your life. Ingratitude will blind you to all those things. It will blind you to the importance of putting Jesus Christ first in your life and being close to Him every single day. When we forget what Christ has done, we tend to become follow fellows. In other words, our hearts get hard. In fact, that truth is reflected in Mark 6, 52, which says, For they consider not the miracles of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Now, there's a third reason why people get scornful because of God's provision. Focusing on something else you think will make you happy or satisfied can make you scornful or discontented. People may write or scorn what God has provided for them because they lack contentment in what they already possess and believe that something else, something else will meet their needs, something else will make them happy. 
You know, Demas was a companion of Paul. But he stopped serving the Lord when he was with Paul because of his love for this world rather than his dedication to the Savior. John was right when he said this, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2.15 Demas had lost his first love for Jesus Christ because he believed, he believed the things of this world would satisfy him. The same attitude developed in the church at Ephesus. The Bible says in Revelation 2.4, Jesus said of this church, Nevertheless, I am somewhat against thee because... Thou hast lost, thou hast left thy, left thy first love. Listen, have you lost or left your first love for the Lord Jesus Christ? I hope you haven't spiritually cooled off. There's a fourth reason why people get cantankerous about God's provision. You have never lost before your blessings. You have never before lost your blessings at all. See, some folks may take God's provision for granted because they have never before lost the blessings they take for granted day after day. You know, we as Americans, we're used to having our stores, shelves full. But you know what we're realizing now? We may not always have that as our, the shelves of our stores are starting to turn bare in this country. Those pictures we saw of Russia about 30 years ago of empty shells are here in the USA. Many times you don't fully appreciate what you have until you have lost it or it becomes scarce and less supply. Needless I say, the value of toilet paper, amen? Well, I'll tell you what, two years ago, man, they cleared that stuff off the shelf when this COVID stuff started, and uh, people realized what was really valuable. It wasn't dollar bills, it was the toilet roll, amen. You know, when the COVID-19 virus was closing business, businesses down, they flocked and cleaned the shelves of food and just about everything else. People have learned to... Try to stock up now on food, stock up on toilet paper and things like that in their homes. See, you, you may never know when you may lose that luxury again. Now, there's a fifth thing. Assuming that others have a better situation or better things that you, than you have can make you gripey. People get cranky when they assume they are missing out on what other people have. That makes a person critical and discontent concerning God's provision of manna. These folks had forgotten what God had done for them, and it led to stinking thinking and a need for an attitude adjustment in their life. The Israelites remembered their diet in Egypt and they longed to return to the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and garlic. Perhaps they made pizza, I don't know, but they were missing all those dishes that they used to eat. They were saying the people in Egypt are so much better off than we are because they got all that good food. Obviously, they had forgotten the slavery that they had to endure in Egypt. They had forgotten the terrible bondage from which God had delivered them. Slavery is a high price to pay for just a change in diet. Number six, the assumption you will always, always have His blessings can make you scornful. Air, water. The Bible, food, sleep, time, and tomorrow are all gifts from God. 
that can be taken away. You and I have no guarantee of tomorrow. You have no guarantee of good health tomorrow. You have no guarantee of your life tomorrow. Proverbs 27.1 Boast not thyself of tomorrow. <coughs> For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boasting about tomorrow, it leads to carelessness. The cocky, overconfident attitude can lead a person to drop their guard or to be caught off guard. Boasting of tomorrow demonstrates pride. It denies God's control over your life. The attitude that says this, I'm in control and I'm going to do what I want can lead to some very big surprises in your life. Babylon had this attitude, and James warned us about thinking this way about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Isaiah 47.10 says, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, <coughs> it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Boy, what a powerful verse of warning. James said in 4.13, you, most of you are familiar with it. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. And James says this, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. If the Lord will, this is what I'm going to do. If the Lord will, this is where I'm going to be. If the Lord will. People, people today, they put off the decision to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior for salvation because they believe that they have plenty of time to do it later. After Paul spoke about righteousness, temperance, and judgments to come, the Bible says a man named Felix trembled. Right then, when he was trembling, he should have trusted Christ right then. Instead, he told the Apostle Paul, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Acts 24, 25. Paul made it clear the time to trust Jesus Christ is now. But many people say, Go thy way. When I have a convenient season, I'll, do, I'll listen to what you got to say. I'll do business with Jesus Christ. But Paul said this. He says, <laughs> Paul said, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Because you don't know if you're going to have a now tomorrow. Other people spurn God's provision of salvation because they actually just don't believe in the Lord at all. They put their trust in something or someone else, but to no avail. And the Bible says if they don't do that, they will not be saved. John 3, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. What a beautiful part of that verse. But he that believeth not is condemned 
already. People ask, what do you got to do to go to hell? Nothing, you're already condemned. Already. Is not condemned because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not accept Him as your Savior, the Bible says you're destined for hell. That's where you're going to go. In 2002, Pastor Rick Warren shared a story about Ken and C.J. Mansfield who lived in Bodega Bay, California. They ran a store and a deli in that town. Their small community north of San Francisco had one homeless man whose name was Garland, who he acted kind of odd, and the man slept in the city park. The Mansfields, however, befriended Garland, and they regularly provided him with food and with kindness. After their store was robbed, Everyone assumed that Garland was the one who robbed the store. But the Mansfields never suspected their friend at all. When the police arrived with Garland at the deli, he had a very expensive gift basket that seemed to incriminate him. But it was the same basket that Ken and C.J., had given to him a few days earlier. To protect their friend from embarrassment, the, this Christian couple immediately expressed thanks to Garland for returning the basket so, the basket so they could finish putting in a few items that they had forgotten to put in the other day. Ken then opened the cash register and said, Here's the change I forgot to give to you. So Ken just made up a number, $38.67, and handed over Garland, handed the money over to Garland. So the police let Garland go. A few days later, Garland died in that park while sleeping, and the Mansfields were called by an attorney to say they were the sole heirs of all of Garland's possessions. Garland had written a little note. It said, the entire contents of my travel bag are yours. It contained a bag of bird seed. It had a Bible in it. And it also had a bank book with the names of Ken and C.J. Mansfield on it. The last entry was a deposit for $38.67, making the grand total in the bank book over $3 million. Garland had simply used the savings account booklet as a bookmark for his Bible. And it was left at Matthew chapter 25, verse 35, and he had underlined the verse that says, I was a hungred, and you gave me meat. This homeless man had hidden wealth that nobody suspected at all. And tragically, Many think the same thing when they picture Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. They think that Jesus has nothing to offer them when in reality, Christ offers the wealth of the gift of salvation to anyone who will trust in Him for salvation. Have you made the decision to put your faith in Him? He has paid the price for you. Uh, if you have trusted Him as your Savior, by the grace of God, live your life for Him. And every day, count your blessings. Every day, be grateful for what God has done. Even when your world's falling apart, even when everything's going bad, 
If you'll just take time to say, Lord, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take some time right now just to praise you and thank you for all that you've done. And I don't know what you're going to do for me tomorrow, but I'm going to praise you now for what you're going to do tomorrow. Lord, I'm trusting you to answer prayer. Lord, I'm trusting you with my burdens. And Lord, I pray that your will will be done in my life. I'll tell you what, it'll do wonders for you. It will.